So now we're going to try and study a projectile motion. Now remember that we said that projectile motion is essentially something that's launched at an angle to the vertical. And so let's call this the initial velocity u. Now, we only learned how to study motion in a straight line. And so if we think about the entire projectile motion, well, that's not really a straight line. So we can't analyze it directly. So what we want to do, we're going to do a little trick over here. We need to split this up into two components. And so usually they will give you the angle to the horizontal. And that's where you need to split this into the horizontal component and the vertical component, which we will call ux and uy. Now, of course, using trigonometry, in this case, ux equals to u cosine theta and the uy equals to u sine theta. And remember that in projectile motion, we have spoken about the independence of motion. So we want to study the horizontal and the vertical motion separately. And remember, the horizontal motion is essentially a constant velocity. And so the only equation that, that makes sense for something like that is, well, distance or sx equals to ux times time. However, for this guy, he's in free fall. And so there's a constant downward acceleration. And so we can use our equations of rectilinear motion. And uh, let's just write them down. We have v equals to u plus a t. Everything will be in the y domain now, okay, as y equals to uyt plus half ayt squared, and vy squared equals to uy squared plus 2aysy. Wonderful. So let's see how we can use these equations together. Now let us consider a very simple projectile motion. Okay, let's say we've got something that just goes from here to here. Okay, I'm launched it at a initial velocity u at an angle theta to the horizontal. And so what we could do, let's say I want to figure out how long is the entire journey. So the time, what we like to call the time of flight. Let's call it t. And so we choose our start, we choose our end, and we do some sort of analysis. We can do a SUVAT analysis, right, in the y domain. Now, what is the vertical displacement from here to here, from start to end? Well, it's zero, right? You're at the same vertical height. Uy we've seen is u sine theta. And remember, if this is u sine theta, if I'm looking at the same vertical height across, then that will be negative u sine theta at the end. And so my v is negative u sine theta, a is minus g, and t is what we're trying to find. So we can use v equals to u plus at, right? And uh, we can turn this around. So t equals to v minus u over a, which gives us a nice little formula. So the time of flight is essentially minus 2u sine theta over minus g, and minus signs cancel. And so we have with us a very beautiful expression over here, all right? t equals to 2u sine theta over g. Now, what if I wanted to find this, the horizontal distance? Well, Remember that the horizontal distance Sx is simply ux times the time elapsed. Now I can use this time because the time of flight, which is the time taken for the ball to go up and down vertically, must also be the same as the time taken for the ball to travel this horizontal distance. And so ux we have seen is u cosine theta. And I'm going to multiply this by this entire expression 2u sine theta over g. And if we do some mathematics, Right, we can show that this becomes 2 sine theta cosine theta times u squared over g. And of course, we've seen before that this, using the double angle formula, is u squared sine 2 theta over g. And hence, we have another beautiful expression over here. Sometimes in projectile motion, we call this the horizontal range. And here, so here's an example of how we can break down projectile motion.